Hey everyone! So today I'm going to be setting up my drip system in the garden for this year. So I did have a drip system last year. It was 100% the greatest decision I've ever made for my garden. So if you're wondering if you should set up a drip system, I highly recommend it. Even if you have just a few pots, the amount of stress that it kind of takes off of you or just knowing that you can leave the garden for a weekend and not have to worry about watering it or putting some milk jugs filled with water and little holes in it like I used to do. It's just something that takes care of a little bit of routine maintenance, leaving you time to do other things. So I would highly recommend it. Um, the one I had last year, I'd say about half of my garden was set up on it. So all of my raised beds and then a few of my bags. My goal for this year is to get at least 90% of both the containers that I have in the raised beds. Basically any container, 90% of them set up on drip. There's just a few that I think because of their placement on the deck, I can't get the drip to, although maybe I'll try. And then there's some that I know just don't really need it. Um, so I have some like my blueberries and my raspberries. Those I usually only water once a week and the drip system I mostly use for my annuals that I'm watering either every other day or every day when it's really hot. So what I'm going to do today is talk a little bit about the drip systems I use because I have two different ones. Um, talk about how I've set it up and then I'll go through the process of actually checking that it still works and then getting it extended. I actually don't know if I'm going to be able to do everything today because it is a little bit later already, um, but I'll at least check what I have set up so that I know if there's anything that I need to repair or replace. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get it set up on a different day if I run out of time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you the two systems that I use and most of the pieces are inside. So I'm gonna take you back there and walk you through them. It's one of those things that I always thought setting up drip was gonna be very complicated. So I kept pushing it off. And then when I finally just went through and bought the first drip kit that I had, it's really easy once you get the hang of it. So I promise you will not regret it if you get a drip system. So let me go show you the two that I have. I have everything laid out from my two drip kits. So I have some that I just left outside. Um, these are mostly the spare pieces. Over here, so kind of this area right here, is the Proven Winners drip kit. And that's the first irrigation kit that I had. Then I also got this one on Amazon from the brand Carpathian. Carpathian. Um, I'll link that below. I like both of them. This one I used in the garden last year out front. This one I used out back in the space that I promised I wasn't going to expand any plants to so we can actually have a sitting area, but I did have four melon plants there last year. So I hooked this one up just because they needed a lot of water. Overall, they both work really well. Um, I only used it one year, but they both worked really well for me last year. There are some differences. So I would say overall, the Proven Winners Drip Kit is easier to use right from the get-go. There's fewer parts. There's not as many different pieces to it. So you kind of pick it up a lot faster. I think the Carpathian one is a little bit more robust. Um, the main tube size is a little larger as well. So I feel like this one can probably extend further. And then there's also a difference between the emitters. So the piece that actually puts the water out into the plant. So with the Proven Winners one here, all of the drip comes out this little hole. So this one is definitely a drip kit. I think the other one's technically just irrigation because it's not dripping, um, but it emits just one drip at a time. So this one, it lets out water a lot slower, which means you have to run it longer. I think this one I ran for 20 minutes in the morning. Um, and you can't like increase or decrease the amount of water that comes out. If you want more water in a container, you just have to add another emitter. So benefits I've heard is that if you water your plant slower, it allows it to absorb the water more efficiently than having it run through the pot. I didn't particularly notice an issue either way using these or the other ones. So with Carpathian, what you get is emitters like this. And this is what I feel like I've seen most commonly um, before I started using it. But with this one, you basically twist up, which lets more water come out in a larger ring. And then you twist it shorter if you want less water to come out and it'll be in a shorter ring. Um, this does admit more water overall. So this one, I think I only ran five minutes every morning. 
Now what I think would make sense in my garden is to have the little drips set up in the smaller containers and the larger emitters in the raised beds. But I think because I already had the system set up last year and I don't want to completely redo everything because I think that would be too much work and waste like some of the tubing that I have. I'm probably just going to use what I had last year, maybe reconfigure it a little bit um, and then go from there. Now, let me also talk just a little bit about how these systems work if you've never had one before. So this, for the proven winners, there's one size tubing. This is what you run from the hose that I'll show you the hookup. Uh, you run it along the drip. You basically make a cut every time you want to expand the drip system to a plant. So you make a little cut and then let's say, for example, I just wanted to have one drip emitter coming out from it. Whoop. I would shove this in where I cut it and then I would put another piece of tube going out this way with a drip emitter at the end of it. That will make more sense when I actually show you what it looks like outside, but there's these little T-bars and then there's ones that go out uh, both directions. Then there's these stakes, which actually stake the drip into the ground. I didn't realize I only had two left, so I'm also gonna try to use these hairpins. Um, hopefully, I don't think they'll like squish the drip tube and should be able to run fine. If these don't work, then I'll have to order more of these, but I already have a bunch of these on hand, so might as well try that out. Um, but that's really you know, the only parts of this, so that's why I feel like this system's a little bit easier to get started. Whereas over here, this tubing is three eighths of an inch, so almost a half inch. And this is the one that you hook up to like the hose faucet and the timer. Same thing, you'll cut it every time you want to put some drip out at a certain place. And then they have these things that you kind of stick um, the tubing into and then you use that tubing, which is a quarter inch to come out and then hook up this to that quarter inch tube. So you can see here, there's just kind of a few more things involved here. They also have similar, these little T-bars as well. Um, if you're gonna expand off of the half inch tubing, or sorry, the quarter inch tubing. So yeah, there's just a few more pieces here, which I think makes this one, again, it's still easy once you get the hang of it. It's just not as simple of a setup as this one. But then again, I feel like this one's a bit more robust and would reach further in larger gardens. So I think that's a good kind of summary of those two systems. Let me know if you have any questions on those. I also here have a hose splitter that I used last year, but I needed more. So I'll show you what that looks like outside. And I'll also show you the timers that I'm using as well. I'm outside now and this is our hose faucet in the garden. And I am very appreciative of this because the first year that I kind of gardened on a larger scale at a place we were renting, there was a deck, but no faucet. So we hooked up a hose inside into the sink that was closest, but it wasn't that close. And then just got a very long hose that I had to set up and drag out every day. So I am very glad to have a faucet out here. And then the first year I gardened here, I just had a hose, no drip system. So I just tied it right into the faucet. Last year I had the double splitter and I had the timer and a hose. This year we've upgraded again to a four-way splitter. So timer for proven winners, hose, nothing. And then a timer for Carpathian. And these you just kind of toggle on and off. So if I, this one's off right now because I'm not running it. Um, this one's off because I haven't been running it, but I'm going to turn it on. So now water will flow through there. And this one is on as well. The timers did not come with the kit. So this one I just got off of Amazon. Uh, they're both battery powered. I'm not gonna worry about setting this one up right now since I don't have this system set up. But over here, I believe this was either purchased on Proven Winners separately. Again, it doesn't come with the kit or it was one that they recommended that I then purchased from a different site. But I know that this is the timer that Proven Winners recommended. Um, and then here, you know, everything is turned off right now because we've had enough rain that I haven't had to set it up. It's actually been funny. It's been like 80 to 90 degrees the last few days and now it's 50 and kind of gray and wet outside. So I don't know when I'll actually have to start running these regularly, but I do want to get them set up. So I have it set up. This is the current time. Uh, running at oh, 6.30 for 30 minutes every day. Um, that I think that's what I used kind of just at the highest peak of summer. Um, but right now the program is off, so it's not actually going to run. 
if I wanted to turn the program on, I could just toggle over. What I am going to do, or actually maybe I'll do it in a second after I show you where the Proven Winners Drip system is running, but I'm gonna turn it on, manually run it, just to make sure it's still running through everything. And then here, battery just says, okay, that'll change to low if I need to turn uh, change out the batteries. I'll take you along following this beige tube and I'll just show you kind of where I have it already set up. So the setup isn't the exact same last year as this year, except the raised beds and some of the containers. So some have a drip to them and then some I have to add. Last year I didn't have anything over here, so I don't have any emitters from this main tube. So I'll have to add that in. Then coming in here, you can see one emitter down there next to the Dahlia for the, I think for the five, seven and 10 gallon grow bags that I used last year, one emitter seemed to be plenty. I would always recommend starting with one. And then if you need more, you can add more to it. There are sunflowers directly sewed in here. I don't know where their final place is yet. So I haven't added drip. If they're going to stay here, I'll just kind of run from the tube along the back into each of these. So the main tube is coming along here and just all along the back going up there into this raised bed. So now I'll show you over here because you'll get a better sense of how the drip system works. So the main tube runs. You make a cut in the main tube where you want to extend an emitter. You shove a T-bar in there or the one that's shaped like an X and then you run a little bit more tubing or however long you need from the main tube to the plant. And then you add the drip to it and stake it into the ground. So I have one, two, three that were here last year. Three seem to work for everything in one bed this size. We'll see if it works again this year or I need to add something. Um, but these are not in their final place yet because I do have more sunflowers sewn in here that I don't know exactly where they're gonna pop up yet. So I'm gonna wait for them to sprout before I kind of tack those down. Coming around here, the main drip runs down here. And then I did have plants up here last year. So there's a little bit of tubing that runs up in the front. And then the main tubing comes back. Let's see if I think each of these dahlias has one or do I need to add? Nope, looks like I'll have to add one to this dahlia. This dahlia has one right here. Coming up into this bed, for some reason I only had two emitters in here last year, so I'm probably gonna add a third one. Coming down around here, again, the tube just continues along. It does come with nails, so if I wanna get it flush against the wood, I can do that. I actually did that over there that I'll show you. Uh, these grow bags, I had a tomato in this one. It worked well with two drips. I have two drips here, two drips here emitter coming up and there you can see the nail tacked on there and then one two three and that takes us to the end of this section of the drip and when you get to the end here it doesn't have like an end cap so you just put a drip on the end whereas the Carpathian system does have an actual end cap but that's not the entire proven winners drip kit it actually comes around here it's underneath the raspberry pot. And what I like about the quarter inch tubing, you can see here, it just fits very nicely into the groove of my deck, which I don't think the Carpathian will do. So I'll kind of see how I'm gonna hide that. Now, last year I had this tubing running all throughout this bed. I think I had six emitters, but because I think the Carpathian emitters will work better in a larger bed like this and the proven winners will work better for these small pots. My goal is to get the entire herb garden set up on drip because that would make life a lot easier, especially because I have so many herbs, um, but also these smaller pots dry out faster. So just knowing that they are set up to drip will make my life a lot easier. Um, so let's see, do I have one here? Doesn't look like, so you need to add one here. I have one, two, three, four, five, the end one that'll obviously have to extend. And I'll hopefully get the rest of these set up on drip as well. So it is starting to rain a little bit. What I think I'm gonna do right now is run this manually and check all the drips and then I'll probably actually do the setup a different day. Um, but if I just come down here to manual, so 
that's program, that's manual. And I'll run it for three minutes. I need to clean the screen. Let's see if you can hear it kick on in just a second. And there we go. So let's go see if everything is working as it should or if there are any leaks anywhere. So just coming in, that one is dripping. That one is dripping. I mean, it does seem like, so you need to add one here. That one down there is dripping. Now the closest ones to the faucet are more likely to be working and the further away you get, the pressure might get less. So let's say I've run this too long or I have too many emitters, then I might see some issues with the ones at the end. But so far, everything is looking good. This one's covered and a little bit plugged up, so I'll clean that off. And that one is dripping as well. How's this one doing? Also underneath the mulch. Some people do bury these to hide them. The plants for me get big enough and I like to see them so that I can identify any issues right away. Those are dripping. Those are dripping. These are dripping. Yeah, that one's dripping. These look good. Let's check the last one down this way. Yes, also dripping. And then coming over here. So this one is actually the furthest one away. So it's a good sign that there's water coming out of it. So I think, I mean, I don't see any leaks. It seems like everything that was set up last year to drip is still dripping this year. Oh, this one is out of the plant. That one's in there. So yeah, I mean, I think it looks good which is surprising because I always expect to run into some sort of issue. So I think I am going to pause here for the day. Uh, it is very good to know that the existing system still seems to be working just fine. Um, so once the weather is a bit warmer, probably in the next day or two, I'm going to get the rest of this set up. So I need to expand from the Proven Winners set to the other containers that I want to set up. And then I need to get the Carpathian system set up to the center raised bed and some additional containers. And this isn't something that you have to make sure to get it right the first time. If I add containers, I can add new drip. If I take containers away, I can you know, put the drip to somewhere else. Um, so don't feel like you have to get everything correct on the first time, but I do like to have my containers at least in the general area of where I want them so I don't have to correct too many things along the way. Also something to note, this might seem like kind of obvious, but I didn't realize it when I first set up my drip system, but if you have an automatic drip system set up, you do have to leave your faucet on. Um, so I would typically, when I was using a hose, not only would I like be done using the hose, but then I would turn the faucet off. You do have to leave the faucet on so the flow of water is open and running to your drip system. We also had some issues with a leaky hose spigot this past spring early. So it is something you should check, just make sure there's no leaks kind of with the handle, but it was really easy to replace with just new parts. Um, no major issues or damages there. So yeah, make sure your hose spigot is working well, no leaks there, and then make sure you're leaving it on so that your drip system actually does run. So I will check back in in another day or two, and then we'll get the rest of the system set up and ready to go for the season.